Okay, so these ones with the red binder clip are my electromagnetism ones. And this is 18% um, of the focus of the physics jerry, so another very big area. I guess I could explain how I actually use these note cards as well. So my, uh, my strategy for using note cards is I would go through the entire deck and if I got it right, I would put it in one pile and if I got it wrong, I'd put it in another and I would go through the wrong pile until I got them all right. I think this is how most people use flashcards, but... <laughs> Um, and again, if you didn't watch the other ones of these, um, let me give you my disclaimer that these are cards I just made for my own personal use. They might have errors in them and they might not be that helpful, but if they are, I hope you enjoy them. There should be a link below um, for where you can find a copy of these um, and you can watch the video if you would like to quiz yourself um, as I go through the cards. All right, voltage across an inductor. Uh, V sub L equals L di dt, where L is the inductance, I is current. Voltage across a capacitor. <laughs> v sub C equals Q over C, where Q is the charge and C is the capacitance. The electric field at boundaries. This was a hard one for me. So for the electric field of the boundary, the parallel components, out minus in, should equal zero, and the perpendicular components, out minus in, should equal sigma over epsilon naught. Cyclotron radius, R equals MV over QB, where Q is the charge and B is the, B, uh, the magnetic field. B is the B field, that's not helpful to say. <laughs> the inductance of a solenoid, it says L equals mu naught N squared times A over a little L. So N is the number of turns and A is the area. The potential energy of a magnetic dipole in a magnetic field. This is U equals negative M dot B. EMF, which is the electric motive force, which is not a force. <laughs> uh, this is denoted by epsilon, and that's equal to the negative derivative of phi sub B with respect to time. Inductive reactants, this is X sub L, and it equals omega times L. The power radiated by an accelerating point charge. This is a relatively complicated equation that I don't think I ever successfully remembered, but there's actually two of them. So it's Q squared times A squared over six pi epsilon naught C to the third, which is also equal to mu naught q squared a squared over six pi times c, as long as the velocity is much, much less than c, where c is the speed of light. Electric potential, so v at point b is equal to the negative integral from a to b of e dot dl, so it's a line integral. Equivalent resistance for multiple resistors. So if they are resistors in series, then the equivalent resistance is just the sum of the individual resistances. And if they're in parallel, then one over the equivalent resistance is the sum of one over the individual resistances. Capacitance, Q equals CV. Q is the charge V is the voltage, C is the capacitance. The volume element in spherical coordinates. So in Cartesian, it would just be dx, dy, dz. Um, but in spherical coordinates, dv equals r squared sine theta d theta d phi dr.
The pointing vector, named after a person named pointing, does not actually mean pointing, even though it kind of is. <laughs> Uh, this is S equals 1 over mu naught E cross B. The potential energy stored in a magnetic field. So it's U sub B equals 1 over 2 mu naught times the integral of the magnitude of B squared times the volume of. Speed of light in a vacuum, this is not looking for a numerical answer, this is looking for an expression. Um, that is C equals 1 over the square root of epsilon naught mu naught. So this can help you remember how epsilon naught and mu naught are related. Maxwell's electrostatic equations in integral form. So electrostatic means there's no moving, um, moving fields. So this is the surface integral of E dot ds equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught and the, um, inter the circle integral of E dot dl equals zero. Where Q enclosed is the charge enclosed by the surface. The magnetic flux this is phi sub b, capital phi sub b, and that's equal to the surface integral of b dot ds. The average power delivered by an AC generator. <laughs> it's very specific. <laughs> so p average equals um, the RMS voltage over the resistor squared over R, the resistor. The phase constant of an RLC circuit is given by tangent of delta, where delta is the phase, equals X sub L minus X sub C over R, where those are the different reactances. Capacitive reactants. X sub C equals 1 over omega times C. The magnetic field of a toroid. B equals mu naught N times I divided by 2 pi R. The impedance of an RLC circuit is given by Z. And that equals the square root of R squared minus the quantity X sub L minus X sub C squared. The peak current of an RLC circuit says I peak equals V applied peak over Z. Cyclotron frequency, omega equals QB over M. Inductance, phi B equals L times I, where L is the inductance. Alternatively, epsilon, the um, EMF, equals negative L di dt. Intensity, uh, this is the average intensity S equals one half C times epsilon naught squared times E naught squared. Equivalent inductance. So when inductors are um, in series, the equivalent inductance is the sum of the individual inductances and when they are in parallel, one over the equivalent inductance equals the sum of one over the individual inductances. Similar to resistors.
energy stored in an inductor, u sub i equals one half l i squared. The electric field of an infinite plane of charge sigma, then you have that E equals sigma over two epsilon naught n hat, where n hat is the direction perpendicular to that infinite plane of charge. The torque on a dipole in an electric field, this is tau equals P cross E, where P is the dipole. The resonance frequency of an RLC circuit, omega naught equals 1 over the square root of L times C, inductance times the capacitance. Spherical coordinates, <laughs> always good to remember. Um, in this case, I have it written at the Cartesian coordinates as an expression of the cylindrical, or excuse me, spherical. So x equals r sine theta cosine phi, y equals r sine theta sine phi, and z equals r cosine theta. So here, um, the convention I use is, and that I'm, I believe is used on the test, is that theta is measured down from the z-axis and phi is the azimuth level. So a little drawing here to help remember that. The magnetic field of a solenoid B equals mu naught times N times I. The RC time constant. So this is tau RC equals R times C. <laughs> A lot of these equations are pretty simple, but um, I tended to get them very confused all the time, and that's why I made all of these note cards to help me keep them straight. <laughs> A transient RC circuit. So here I was looking for an ex, um, expression for the charge as a function of time, and that is Q equals Q naught e to the negative t over tau rc. So tau rc is the time constant for an rc circuit. Maxwell's equations complete. Um, you'll notice that I had a few different versions of Maxwell's equations in here, and this was the one that kind of brings them all together. So it says the divergence of E equals rho over epsilon naught, divergence of B equals zero, um, the curl of E equals negative dB dt, and the curl of B equals mu naught j plus mu naught epsilon naught d dt. And those are partial derivatives. Very famous equations. I still forget them. <laughs> the RL time constant. This is tau RL equals L divided by R. And a transient RL circuit. Here I was looking for an expression for the current as a function of time. And that is I equals V over R times 1 minus E to the negative T over tau RL. Or tau RL is the RL time constant. Divergence. So this is um, the delta operator dot a vector, and it's equal to the partial derivative of the x component of the vector with respect to x, plus the partial derivative of the y component of the vector with respect to y, plus the partial derivative of the z component of the vector with respect to z. Harder to say in words than it is to just look at the equation. The acceleration of a charged particle in an electric field. This is A equals Q over M times E. The work required to put together a charge arrangement. Um, this is W equals 1 half times the sum from 1 to N of Q sub I times V of R sub R. That's for discrete charges. If it's a continuous function, 
then it, um, w equals one half times the integral of rho of r times v of r times volume of r. This one's a little bit confusing, but it is what it is. The energy stored in a charged capacitor field so is u equals one half q squared over c, or alternatively, one half cv squared. The Lorentz force law, this is that F equals QV cross V. V there is a little v, that's a velocity. Equivalent capacitance. So when you have capacitors connected, how do they um, combine? Well, in series, one over the equivalent capacitance is equal to the sum of one over the individual capacitances, and in parallel, the equivalent capacitance is equal to the sum of the individual capacitances. So this is the opposite of inductors and resistors. <laughs> the potential of an electric dipole. This is V of R equals one over four pi epsilon naught P dot R hat over R squared. P is the dipole vector. pronounce this. Um, I think this is the Biotsevart law, <laughs> but I could be very wrong about that. But in any case, it is a law. <laughs> so hopefully you can read the, the word there or understand my poor pronunciation. So this says that B of R is equal to mu naught I over 4 pi times the integral of DL cross R prime, R hat prime over R prime squared. I always forgot this one. I don't even, this was always a hard one for me. The steady state current of a driven RLC circuit. That is equal, um, I equals V applied peak over Z times cosine of omega T minus delta. So the cosine, the amplitude given by the peak. The general solution to Poisson's equation. So another one I always had trouble with. Um, this is V of R equals one over four pi epsilon naught times the integral of omega of R prime over the magnitude of R minus R prime times volume of, where R is the location of the potential and R prime is the position of the charge distribution. So you've got two different position vectors in here. give you a second to look at that because it's confusing. It's confusing to me anyway. Electromagnetism was not my strongest subject. Intensity of an oscillating electric dipole. So here um, the average value of s is given by mu naught p naught squared omega to the fourth over 32 pi squared times c times sine squared of theta over r squared. I don't think this came up a lot, but. <laughs> the wave solutions for electric and magnetic fields. So here E wave of R is equal to E naught wave times E to the I K dot R minus omega T in N hat direction and B wave of R is equal to one over C times E naught wave times E to the I K dot V, K dot R maybe. <laughs> Sorry, my handwriting is not great on this one. Minus omega T, and this is in the K cross N hat direction. Here's Poisson's equation, which we already saw the general solution for, but here's the actual equation. And it is um, the del operator squared times V equals negative rho over epsilon naught. So 
Maxwell's equation for electrostatics. This shows that um, the divergence of E equals rho over epsilon naught, and the curl of E is zero. So these are just two of Maxwell's equations, basically. <laughs> The resistance due to geometry. So this is saying R equals rho times L over A, where rho is the resistivity of the subsurface. So you get resistance based on the shape of the object. The average power of an oscillating electric dipole. So we saw the intensity before, now this is the power. So the average P equals mu naught, uh, P naught, sorry, mu naught p naught squared omega to the fourth over 12 pi c. So there's a lot of these like random equations in electromagnetism, and I don't remember them being super important, but I still was trying to learn them. So I didn't know what I would need to know. Uh, Faraday's law. So this says that the integral of e dot dl equals negative d phi b dt, where phi b is the magnetic. A parallel plate capacitor with an insulator. So this is, I'm looking here for the capacitance of that capacitor. Um, and that is C equals K epsilon naught A over D. So here K is the dielectric constant for the material. Um, A is the area, D is the de separation distance. Potential energy in an electric field u sub e equals epsilon naught over 2 times the integral of e squared times the volume of light. So all these ones where I, the integral has the volume element over them, those should be triple integrals. I hope that is clear. Um, the electric dipole moment. So we've seen this come up a lot, but this is the actual expression for it. And this is P equals QL, where L here. And then the magnetic dipole moment, we've seen this come up as well. And this is M with a little vector, so you can tell it's not mass, because mass is not a vector. <laughs> um, and this equals I times A as a vector, where A as a vector, um, I believe the vectorial component is perpendicular to the area. A driven RLC circuit equation. This is a general equation for the circuit. And this is L times the second derivative of Q with respect to time, plus R times the first derivative of Q with respect to time, plus one over C times Q equals V applied peak times the cosine of omega T. This is the equation here. Coulomb's law. It says that the force, <coughs> excuse me, force between um, objects 1 and 2 equals k times q1 times q2 over r12 squared in the r12 direction. So this is somewhat equivalent to gravity, um, except there's a negative sign. So this is a repulsive force for same charges. Maxwell's equation for magnetostatics. This says that the divergence of b equals 0 and the curl of B equals mu naught times J. So there is no charging electric field in this case. This is just looking at the magnetics. The gradient. So this is the vector of the Dell operator, and it's equal to the partial derivative with respect to x i hat, plus the partial derivative with respect to y j hat, plus partial derivative with respect to z k hat in Cartesian coordinates. There's different versions in other coordinates. But if you can remember this, it can help you remember what divergence and curl are. <laughs> Energy dissipated by a resistor. This is P equals IV, which also equals V squared over I, also equals I squared times R. This is various expressions for this power. The 
the pointing vector in complex notation. So we saw the pointing vector already, but here's a different notation form. So this says that s equals 1 over 2 mu naught times the real portion of e cross v um, complex conjugate, where those are the wave um, expressions for e. The magnetic field at boundary, so we saw this for the electric field, now here it is for the magnetic field. Um, in this case, the perpendicular component, b out minus b in equals zero. And for the parallel component, b out minus b in equals mu naught k cross n. The average power of an oscillating magnetic dipole, p average equals mu naught m naught squared omega to the fourth over 12 pi c cubed. It's another one of these kind of random equations. Lots of different variables to keep track of here. The capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. So this is similar to what we already saw, but we saw one with an insulator. This is now just one without an insulator. So C equals A epsilon naught over D, where A is area and D is the separation of the plates. Curl. Curl is just del operator cross A. That's literally all I wrote here. <laughs> it's good to remember that is what that is what curl is. <laughs> um, magnetic field uh, from an infinite wire. So this equals uh, b equals mu naught i over 2 pi r by hat. This is a good one to remember. So r would be how far away you are from the infinite wire and then phi hat means that the magnetic field is in the phi direction so it's going around. The dielectric constant of a substance, so it's capital K, and it equals epsilon divided by epsilon naught. So epsilon naught would be the free, um, and epsilon would be in the substance. Voltage across a resistor, V equals IR. Kirchhoff's rules. Kirchhoff's? Kirchhoff's? I'm bad with all these names. <laughs> so this is two rules for circuits, and it says that the sum of currents into a node is always going to equal zero, and the sum of voltages around a closed loop is always going to equal zero. Coulomb's law for E fields is that E um, e equal to the sum of k q sub i over r i squared in the r i direction. So you're basically just doing Coulomb's law and summing it up. But here, notice there's only one charge because you're talking about the electric field, so not the force. The potential energy of a dipole in an electric field. This equals, uh, u equals negative p dot e, or negative p e cosine theta. That's just the definition of a top product. So p here is that dipole moment, e is an electric field. The torque on a magnetic dipole in a magnetic field, torque equals m cross e. So m here is that magnetic dipole um, vector moment, magnetic dipole moment, <laughs> and b is the p field magnetic field. Maxwell's electrostatic, sorry, Maxwell's magnetostatics equations in interval form. Um, and this is b dot s equals zero and b dot l equals mu naught i enclosed. The integral, sorry, the integral of these. <laughs> I'll just show you the equation. Uh, this is the last card. So, <laughs> so that was all of my electromagnetic cards. Um, I know there are a lot of little variables and equations to keep track of in electromagnetism, um, and these I found to be very helpful for keeping track of those. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed these note cards, and if you want to use them for yourselves, you can find them below, um, and we will do some of the other subjects in another video. All right, thanks for watching. Good luck on your next.